All right, uh, now let's have a look uh, how that uh, works with uh, linear theory. And uh, remember, in linear theory, you see P. It's just going to be 2 theta over m infinity square minus 1. <coughs> so we have here our flow fields. So we have a theta over here. We have a theta over here. Let's start for the first part. Uh, so the theta is going to be then uh, the arcus tangents of uh, h over c. But for small angles, you can also say uh, theta is equal to h over c. That makes it a bit easier for us to, to calculate here. Cp is going to be then, for the first part, we have a compression, so we, the, 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 the Cp is going to be positive. Theta is going to be positive 2 times 0 0.1 over square root of m infinity square minus 1. <coughs> that is going to be 0 0.0707. With that, we have now um, the, the first pressure coefficient. This is for the section 2. Cp3 for upper and lower sides are going to be identical. Okay, we need to have now the, the second uh, angle for the, for the expansion over here. So we know it's an expansion, so it needs to be negative. So it's going to be then minus 0 0.1. So please note that for linear theory, you're always taking the, the angle compared to the free stream. So the angle here for the expansion is going to be 5.7 degrees that you need to put inside here on radians and 0 0.1. In expansion theory, you remember you need to look for the local angle. So you're changing the, the angle here twice. But for linear theory, you don't need to do that. Don't do that for linear theory. You just need to have the angle compared to the free stream. So the free stream here is at this degree, at zero degree. This angle here is 5.7 degrees. So you just need to use that. So Cp at the expansion is only going to be 2 times minus 0 0.1 over m infinity square minus 1. That's going to be minus 0 0.0707. So you see again there are some differences compared to the Palomaya theory. But if I now calculate the drag coefficient and the lift coefficient, so Cl of course is going to be zero. Again, there's no pressure difference between the upper and lower side. And uh, sorry, the drag Cd, if you're adding that up, is going to be 0 0.01414. Uh, that is also going to be that is actually a quite uh, quite similar to the drag coefficient that you calculated before. Oh, and the drag coefficient before was 0 0.144. Now, with linear theory, it's 0 0.1414. With that, you calculate the drag coefficient using linear theory. And that, of course, makes it quite easy. You can also make your life um, well, a little bit more difficult for this case using this formula calculating this integral. For this particular case, it would be a little bit more difficult, but in particular, if you want to change the angle of attack quite frequently, you don't, uh, you would need not uh, change, uh, that would make life easier because you need to calculate this term only once. This one is a geometry related part of that equation, and then you not just need to change for the, for the angle of attack. So it can be at, at times easier to, to do that. Actually, this part you've calculated already, because for zero angle of attack, this drag coefficient is exactly that what you've calculated already, so you have that value already. Okay, so um, so these are the values for for, for your diamond-shaped airfoil without uh, uh, angle of attack. 